Real people. Real radio. Wherever you are, make it TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome. We are broadcasting live from the mothership. You are tuned in and listening to Starseed Energy Radio with your host Jonah Bolt. Starseed Energy Radio, where you can always tune in to hear the colors and see the music. Starseed Energy Radio goes live in 3, 2, 1. All right, what's up, Spaceship Earth? Thanks for tuning in. You are now receiving a live transmission from Starseed Radio, where you could always tune in to hear the colors and see the music. I'm your host, Jonah Bolt, the Octorian Starseed. And we have a lovely Tuesday, October 27th, 2015, here today. Sorry about yesterday with our broadcast. We had a little technical difficulties, but we are back live on the air today. Hope everyone did have a good weekend. We had our second series in our Synergy Oneness of the Elements webinar on Sunday. It was phenomenal, if I may say so myself. I want to also give a thanks again to Laura Eisenhower, uh, Philip Gruber. Also, we had two other amazing speakers, Charles Gilcrest. And the last person on the webinar, a very special thanks to Mr. Core Love or Corey Herter down in Costa Rica, which I'm flying back to on Saturday. So look forward to the Pura Vida lifestyle in a little bit. We'll go ahead and get the show started, but first let's give a shout out to StarseedRadio.com where you can always find the latest news and updates. We have some live space weather and other trackers on there, as well as Ryan Dernick from BellweatherPost.com is always posting up the good articles on there, so check us out. Like us on Facebook. You can also download us on iTunes. We are reaching still over 160 countries on iTunes alone being downloaded, so a big shout out to all the listeners and supporters out there. We're also going to be starting a new platform and format coming up. In November, we're hoping to launch the next couple of weeks. We're going to be doing a on live online webinar type of platform on Sunday nights, more of an off grid hour type thing. So we'll let you more know more information about that once we have it. And also, if you haven't gotten your free piece of Elite Shungite, we're still giving away Shungite. We've been doing it since February. I want to get this stone to many people, as many people as we can. Hands. It's an amazing quantum healing stone so you can call toll free 888-400-2328 at any time and also we would love to send you some information on free energy we have about 15 pdf files i'd like to give you and that will cover all different aspects of energy free energy earth batteries just some amazing information we've collected so please contact us you can go to starseed technologies.com and there's a form right in the left hand side just fill that out again that's starseedtechnologies.com and you can contact us that way and the last announcement we have is the gold back security and currency and exchange system that is now sweeping the planet already in 124 countries if you want to sign up for a free gold savings account and turn your fiat paper into gold you can go to starseedgold.com and check that out and next week i'm going to bring you five different speakers in the gold movement right now that's happening we're going to get off the fiat currency the paper dollar which is worthless into a gold back bartering exchange system. This is an amazing system. I'm in it myself. I've been involved for about a month and a half, and uh, it's it's just it's sweeping the world right now, and it's truly something unique. So contact me direct. I would love to talk to you more about it. You can email me direct at jonahbolt at gmail, or go to starseedgold.com, and you can fill out, sign up for a free account. I'll take you to the corporate site, and once you're logged in and registered for a new account, we will be in touch. With that, we're going to get the show started with our daily quote. It's clearly a crisis of two things, of consciousness and conditioning. We have the technological power, the engineering skills to save our own planet, to cure disease, to feed the hungry, to end war. But we lack the intellectual vision, the ability to change our minds. We must decondition ourselves from 10,000 years of bad behavior, and it's not easy. That quote by the very famous Terrence McKenna. Thank you, Terrence, for that quote. 
We'll go ahead and get this show started. We're going to be joined by a guest, James Rink, from SuperSoldierTalk.com. Although he's well-versed, like myself, in many different areas of helping and healing and getting the truth out there. We've had James on the show now for a few years. I met James a few years back in Asheville, North Carolina, actually Black Mountain, right outside of Asheville where I was living. And James has a amazing, a unique story, uh, to say the least, but he's also involved with a lot of topics and information that a lot of people don't like to look at or pay attention to or even give credit to. So uh, with that, we're going to bring on Mr. James Rink to talk about some amazing new projects and other st- topics and stuff that he has dove deep into, talking about my labs, super soldiers, and other uh, topics like that. With that, James, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hi, Joe, and I'm doing good. Excellent. Great. I'm um, looking here on your website. You're also the founder of HealingSoulSurvivors.org, which people can check out. That's an amazing site that uh, talks about basically building eco-cities and infrastructure to embrace and help veterans, soldiers, people with post-traumatic stress. So uh, you're doing amazing, amazing work in that area. And uh, if you would, James, let's start off with maybe your show personal story. It's been a while since we've heard that. But if you could give the listeners a background on how you first got introduced into the super soldier world and going into the realm of building these super cities to help the soldiers. Yeah, well, about 10 years ago, I was friends with someone who had some unusual experiences with his psychic abilities. And um, by exploring that some more, I realized this individual was being experimented on upon, uh, which I believe was by the government. And I say government loosely. It's more of a um, shadow government, or you could call it a breakaway civilization that's not – it's – Theoretically in control of the government, but it's not exactly – you would define it as the government, like elected officials and so on. Um, but uh, so this individual um, explained to me some of the uh, – some things that was going on with that he – like how he's being experimented upon, and, uh, taken to underground bases, uh, put on treadmills, uh, tested for his physical stamina, stamina and some other abilities that he had. But um, – I, by helping him, I realized this individual was suffering from dissociative identity disorder, which is basically a split in the psyche. Uh, your thoughts are all carried in your aura, so what happens is through trauma, it's uh, imagine like um, a hologram splitting into or uh, looking at a mirror and seeing it split into a thousand different pieces. So all the information is there. Each little m- mirror contains a, a fragment of the whole. So the goal was I was trying to help him come bring him back together and uh, there wasn't there's was very little I could do because the technology they used to create these what what I later termed or really it's um it was based on what Andy Perot that he's the one that sort of that came out with this initially um for my research uh, I mean there might have been someone before him but um what 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 I like to term a super soldier uh, you can call him an ultimate warrior. Um, so, uh, the reptilians call him Circe, which is uh, uh, they, uh, sp- special soldiers. Um, but uh, whatever you want to call him, um, the truth is that it appears the military has been trying to engineer a, a basically a super soldier. And there's all sorts of different programs, like the breakaway civilizations. They have their own version of super soldiers. The military has one, you know, through DARPA. And, of course, uh, the ETs, they've got their projects as well. So, um, anyway, I, I mean, I could go into the story again, you know, what happened. But that was, that was at least 10 years ago. But through my own experiences, I realized that... Us meeting wasn't really a coincidence. We were actually in the projects together, except that I was considered a failed project. I was part of what you would call Project Abandon, where I was part of a group of defunct super soldiers who never quite made the cut. And I believe what was going on was uh, I was not cooperating with the programming because they what they do is they split your mind through um, trauma, again, the DID, and they create these altars that go off and they can be like the perfect, not necessarily a Manchurian candidate because Manchurian candidates are, are sacrificial lambs, but they would be reused over and over again. And so what was going on with me 
was um, I believe that my my personal opinion on this is that um, due to who I was and past lives and how old I am and how much experience I have, my soul energy body was not they would what really wasn't able to split it up the way they wanted to, and I wasn't cooperating. So um, they kept jacking up the trauma, and what it ended up doing was just screwing me up to the point where I was basically for many, many years, I was very, I still have some issues with health wise, but, um, I, I've definitely gone through a journey in my health and I don't, I wanted to create an opportunity for other people to go to a place is what I envision a place, or it could be even in your own home. There's technologies for that, like virtual reality headsets that will allow people that have been through trauma to integrate or you can heal or, even though I'm not a medical doctor, I can't really use the word heal. But um, the goal is, is that we can take some of these new technologies that are coming out, scalar technologies that sync your brainwave patterns, or even technologies such as um, the the um, Antony um, Anton I'm sorry Anton Priory uh, magnetic Bordeaux machine. Which uh, are you familiar with that, Jonah? Are you still the, sorry? Well, I'm I'm not familiar with that particular technology. I'm familiar with scalar waves and stuff like that, but okay. not, not with that one. Yeah, well, well, allegedly, what this device did well, it was first of all, it was invented by Anton Antony Priory back in the 1970s in France, and what he actually um, was able to come up with is this device that would think of like a comb going through your aura, and whenever you get sick viruses, bacteria, a disease, or even old age causes a magnet, uh, I'm sorry, a, a, a frequency within your aura. So even if you were to get rid of the disease, that, that holographic frequency is still there. And that's why some people have cancer and so on, keep getting it back over and over again. So he came up with this device that was able to comb your, like a comb, was able to pull out these frequencies out of your aura. And within two minutes... Uh, there were two treatments, um, one week apart, two minutes long. He was able to cure cancer um, in rats and mice, um, and he was also able, he. It appears the device also reverses aging. Uh, so, um, think like, I apparently what's going on is it it goes back in time before your DNA was ill or sick or altered or mutated, and it restores it. To the original blueprint. So, um, what happened is he he got some funding, and he was already he's building because back then the technology wasn't as advanced as it is today. I mean, you had uh, the vacuum tubes and all this, and you really had the computer technology. So the device he had was only large enough to treat a, a mice or, uh, or rats. So he was building a human, a life sized human version. And what happened is. He got the funding. He was almost done complete, completing it, but his backers um, were threatened. Some of them were killed. His financial backers and the funding all dried up, and it was never fully built. And it is my belief the MIB or the Breakaway Civilization got a hold of that technology, and they're using it for black ops, for off-world missions, where they can age-reverse soldiers um, and then send them back to planet Earth or whatnot, like... Um, wasn't there one, uh, Corey Good? I think he talks. Oh wait, uh, Captain K. Um, anyway, so when when he was on Mars, they reversed age reversed him. He was there for twenty years, and they age reversed him back into um, to his younger appearance, and then put him back in time is what he claims. But uh, so if we could incorporate technologies like that, and it's actually there is um, Dan Winter. Are you? From, are you, I'm, yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Dan's been on the show, and we just did a webinar with him last month, which was phenomenal. The synergy, uh, oneness of the elements, when he talked about um, some amazing equations and time and space uh, uh, equations that he has figured out. The equations that Einstein was looking for, apparently, um, that is the time and space fabric of vortex uh, that we are in that's wrapped around the, the Earth. So he's got some amazing studies and developments and breakthroughs that he's done. He's, he's phenomenal. Okay, great. Yeah, well, Dan Winter is actually was able to recreate this uh, te technology. 
Uh, so imagine if we can incorporate that and other, you know, scalar technology, which uh, think of it as uh, it syncs brainwave patterns. People who have trauma, we can sync it back to a, a state of a frequency where they don't have the trauma is expressing um, within their, their brainwave frequencies. Um, that's just one example. Or what, what if we can incorporate um, infrared technology or even, say, inert type gases and you know um, neon tubes because uh, they all give off frequency as well. Xeon has been shown to help with anti-aging or age, even age reversal. Yes? Okay. Um, anyway, so... So yeah, well, if we can incorporate these technologies into, say, a resorts-type setting, and I've actually, on my website, healingsoulsurvivors.org, there's a couple different projects that we're working on at the moment. And I say we, uh, Joan is actually helping me out on this. Um, but one of the ideas was to create like a beach hotel that was in the shape of a quartz crystal cluster. Uh, another idea was to create a dolphin type resort, possibly in Costa Rica. Uh, that would what what I would like to do is either bring bring the dolphins to the hotel, or perhaps have the hotel float out in be a floating hotel out in the ocean, which is technically a ship. But um, you know, there's there's different ways of going about it. But the goal is is to incorporate a, a program that allows people to get um, treatment with dolphins and uh, right now any kind of dolphin therapy is extremely expensive ten fifteen thousand dollars and um, if we could bring that price down it would help it would be much more we can make it much more affordable to the people that need it um, and so that was those are some of the small <laughs> smaller projects the largest project that we got going on right now is uh, something called Pantasia which is a health and wellness based theme park and um, the idea is it would have a uh, giant biodome garden that would have these healing technologies inside of it such as giant quartz crystals that are illuminated by lasers hooked up to fiber optics and the lasers are all modulated at certain frequencies that enable um, healing and wellness Um, and also there would be novel type holographic projections in the gardens as well of fairies or elves or whatever different type of different various lands or whatnot. Um, and there'll be giant monuments and complexes where you can go inside and there'll be holographic theaters, so which will constantly be changed out. So there'll always be new content um, being generated there. Uh, so yeah, and and as you go through maybe a monorail type system, that you be exposed to all these different technologies that will help you um, bring your body back into balance. So um, that project uh, will also include many different be, be hotels attached to it that will contain many of these same systems. Uh, we could even have um, one idea we had was to do build a production studio where we could have um, produce our own films, maybe virtual reality, because a lot of this is going to be heavy in uh, VR and holography. Right now, um, holography, the the projectors are very expensive, so it's not really feasible on a mass production, you know, to have holographic theaters in in your town. But that technology is going to come in the future, so right now we're just planning ahead so yeah and there's also other projects involved in that but I'm going to get let Jonah give him a chance to make a comment here or if you got any questions or if not I continue yeah no James you can keep going we, we have about uh, seven eight minutes before break and then when we get back I want to dive into the my labs and more about the super soldier but you can continue okay okay good well well, that gives me time to talk about the City of Light. Okay, so all these projects are really are really good ideas. Um, one of the problems, though, that it seems a lot of people have is like, James, I would love to go to that, but I don't have the money. Okay, so we have this issue of money, and um, I think you know all, so many people are affected by it. So I was trying to bring 
brainstorm a solution. What, what can we do to boost economic activity so people can afford to use these these systems? Because these hotels are, are going to cost more money than your typical hotel. I mean, it won't be like terribly expensive, but you know, it, it will cost more. Um, so, so what I was looking at is what if we could set up our own city or, or town and we'll build it based on sacred geometry. We'll incorporate, uh, say, LED lights within the roadways or maybe we can have um, free energy technology or, um, say, perhaps we could ha- uh, have, um, you know, all the buildings would be based on, would have to be round or pyramid shape and it has to do with frequency and more harmonious setting because it's in, in nature there isn't these square box cubicles it's all you know cells or even cells are even r- rounded on the corners um, on on the microscopic level so we can create a city that's more in har- that has more harmony in nature and and it would be a much more beautiful place to live now Okay, great. We got another good idea here, but there's still how does that deal with the money issue? So what I thought, if we could fund a bank and fraction and the bank would actually be owned by the city, we could theoretically speaking, I just I'm going to use the a 1 to 10 fractional reserve banking ratio that all banks right now um, because we're on a fractional reserve banking system issue their own money out of Thin air. Now I say thin air. It's more like a computer ledger. They just add a few digits here and there. But when they loan you that money, it's not like it's being taken from someone else. It's being. It's think of it as an inflationary action where it's just being generated and pumped into the economy. So it is a inflationary. Of course, it causes it. It's inflationary. But what? Okay. So the goal is. This, if the city was to own the bank, then what we could do is we could divide up the ownership. Maybe, well, I would like to. I would like each citizen of the city to own own a share of the bank, but this bank itself would be funded through a loan, most likely. And then we could, if we could fund it with say twenty billion dollars, then we could fractionally lend out two hundred billion dollars of loans. Now, typically, it would probably cost about a hundred billion dollars just to build up this city of the future but the other hundred billion dollars will allow us to do some interesting things of course that that uh we could build uh this pantasia we could build um a a 20 billion dollar hyperloop system in southern california connecting san francisco sacramento la san diego and even las vegas and uh, it would only cost about twenty dollars to travel between each one of those cities, and take you about thirty minutes or so between each stop. And you can even drive your car into it. Uh, so it would decrease the cost of living in California if we were to put it there, and it would drive up economic activity. Uh, so there is a lot of potentials there with the Hyperloop. Um, I'm not sure of my what my time is here. Uh, Joan, are you familiar with the Hyperloops? You have you have about uh, five minutes. No, I'm not familiar with that technology. Okay, well, essentially, it's a maglev train, which is a, it's a high speed bullet train that floats on levitates on tracks uh, through a magnet. And um, what they've actually done those trains only travel about well, roughly maybe two two twenty two eighty. <clears throat> So, but the problem is, once you get above 280, uh, trains start to become, well, really, anything becomes airborne. It starts to take off. So, we have, uh, Elon Musk and his team have come up with, who who came, Elon Musk is behind the Tesla cars and, you know, the, um, anyway, so, uh, his team has come up with an idea. What if we could put, a maglev inside of a tube and um, put um, solar panels on top of the tube that will have pumps that pump out air. So that essentially takes gets rid of the problem of air slowing the train down. So now the train doesn't have is not going to be making a lot of noise because it's in the tube and it's not whistling through the air because there's not much air in. It. I mean, it won't be a total vacuum, 
but it'll be, you know, it's pretty good, pretty close. And then um, this train will be able to travel about 600 miles an hour on average. It goes up to 800. So, uh, yeah. And they're, they're built on like 100-foot tall pylons that go along the highway system. So they don't even need right-of-ways. They got the roads already there, and it's built way up in the air. You don't even see it. So um, you don't have to like build bridges. You know, it might have to go you know, build tunnels going through mountains. But anyway, so um, we can build that. And then here's where the econ- real economic activity comes. We still have about – Hundred billion dollars left over. Let's just say we can put 80, 80 billion of that into low zero percent interest loans. And um, anybody who is an entrepreneur who has a really great idea can apply, send their business plan off to the bank, and the bank, if it's approved, will give you your funding. Um, there would be some cavants, like for instance, example. Um, the funding will will probably be it would have to be spent within an area near th- this this economic region maybe not necessarily in the city itself but within nearby um so you can't just apply for it and go move off to another country you know and do your thing but anyway so um we can do these 0% interest loans in exchange for a portion of your company and so it's not exactly the bank owning it and it's not really the government owning it because the people will own this bank and then we could have dividends and so on and we can eliminate poverty okay we got music going on here i want to say james i think that's a great idea and there is a bank i'll send you some information actually now on commercial break but there's a bank called sib that's forming that's a sovereign international Truth Frequency Radio. I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a Jedi Master. Jedi Master? Yoda. You seek Yoda. Yoda. Clear your mind of questions. You must unlearn what you have learned. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Yoda, with the Force. A shout out to Yoda and the Force. You're listening to Start Seed Radio, and I just want to go over uh, a couple news articles, James, because I know you're up to date with uh, what's happening around the world. And I know we just jumped into the interview, but some of these new articles I'm going to mention right here, right now, and I'll also post these up, um, are going to lead into the Super Soldier talk um, because as we see this this paradigm shift happening, James, all around us. I'm sure you're noticing as well the buildup of military, the buildup of arms, the buildup of nuclear threat, North Korea, China, Syria is going off. I mean, you know, around the world is pretty crazy right now. So um, I just wanted to go into some some groundbreaking news articles. I don't know if you heard this one, but Canada's new prime minister issues challenge to U.S. They're ending all their wars and legalizing pot. Canada just announced they're pulling all their troops fighter jets out of all the different war zones, including Afghanistan, Iraq, and other places, Syria. Um, that's huge news. Um, we had the Hells Angels do a big protest last week because they also said they're legalizing pot, so the Hells Angels were like, whoa, 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 this is a multi-billion dollar business. So they protested, but that that's, that's huge. Uh, we also have Iran is about to legalize cannabis as well, and that's huge coming from a Muslim region like that uh, where we see you know everyone's always fear-mongering and hating on Iran. Um, Iran actually has done some uh, good things for the people and for the planet. Not all bad. Not every single person Iranian is bad where we need to go bomb them or anything like that at all. So that was an article I thought was interesting for Iran to come out with that. And also big news is uh, Houston anthropologist reveals infutable proof 
that the recorded history of mankind is wrong. And uh, this article was just is phenomenal. I mean, I think you know that, James. I know that we've been here a lot longer than what religion says, which is 6,000 years, which is basically written stories by people. But uh, the facts are we've been here a long time. We covered a story that they just found some human remains 2.4 million years old. So we know we've been here for a long time. There's advanced te technologies, advanced civilizations that have been here for a long time, way more advanced than where we are today. So I thought some of these uh, articles were great. And the last one is um, court ruling paves the way for mass confiscation of firearms in America. And this is big news because this is really, as history repeats itself, when you have the government or anyone take away uh, the, the people's weapons, guns, uh, pitchforks, whatever they had back then, arrows, you know, what swords, um, there's always a, a come down, a crackdown of the government ruling or the king or whatever is ruling that village or country like we have today. So that's big news because if they do start trying to confiscate guns, that could be a really messy situation here. This country was founded by everyone having a firearm, knowing how to use it, having a well-regulated militia. That's why the Constitution has that information in there is so that every citizen was considered a man in arms that could protect his family and protect his land and protect this country. Now, what we've done is give our power away where now everyone thinks and, 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 and feels that police are, have all the power and th that they should run our streets. Back in the day, the police were actually sovereign citizens uh, in New York, and a police officer would only monitor, uh, and, and maybe one or two of them would be in the, in the groups. And when they used to go out to police at night, the citizens, they would take them down right there. So if someone was caught stealing or someone was caught doing something. So there was really little crime at all because they, were, they, they knew that people were out there policing the streets as citizens, and they didn't take crap from anybody. They didn't go to the judge and hire a lawyer and get off. You know, they got caught red-handed, you got your hand cut off or whatever they did. So we, we, we see this court ruling here that if it does pave the way to confiscate guns, it's, it may not be a good thing. Now, coming from a spiritual side, James, I think that we don't want to see anyone shoot a firearm or get killed by guns. And I would wish we lived in a world that does not have that. But unfortunately, the powers that be, until we make this conscious leap forward uh, where all of humanity becomes a conscious being of each other, I think that uh, taking the guns away is not going to lead to something good. And, and you know, I definitely don't want to be in a country that's destabilized by a all-out militia war with the government. That's not the reality I'm trying to create. So important articles to stay, pay attention to and stay abrupt on. And uh, I know, James, that you're in the world with the super soldiers and what's going on. And uh, if you would, give us some updates and downloads first about some information regarding the upcoming changes, regarding the financial system, military buildup. Do you know anything on your end? Have you heard news? I know you talk to a lot of people as well. Maybe you can give us a little special report on some breakthroughs um, that you may have heard of over the last few weeks. Yeah, okay. Well, um, first of all, I was wondering, um, are you familiar with uh, what's going on with the uh, Cash Foundation? Oh, my God. I was just going to say Cash at the end. Yeah, Cash has finally made an announcement that his uh, quantum plasma battery packs for the house or, or, or power packs are ready. I know he gifted them to 45 ambassadors, I think it was last week or the week before, of 45 different nations. Um, they had a ceremony. I actually posted the pictures up on my uh, Facebook wall. So I, I haven't seen anything powered yet, but I know that they did have a big inauguration. So um, if you have some more news to, to share with us, that'd be great. Yeah, well... He was also claiming this device could produce food. Did you, um, did you look into that part? I, I had no idea about that. No, that's new to me. Um, yeah, I was just curious of the process about that. Uh, cause, uh, he, he now, I did speak to down. a group um, in California a few weeks ago that has come up with a way to 3D print food. Um, and they're going to refugee camps around the world right now and have been 3D printing food, uh, regular 100% natural food, you know, no chemicals or anything like that. Um, I've actually saw the machine online, so I know that's happened, but I didn't know Cash had any connection to that type of technology. Well, well he claims that he can take this plasma and convert it into anything, uh, such as food. Uh, he was – I watched one of his – interviews or not really interview whatever, whatever the, this three hour long recording and um i think maybe it was something that like a, a water solution 
that maybe uh, I believe one person was saying it tasted like chicken soup because it, I don't know how they were able to pro- implant and you know implant that inf- information into the water, but it made them feel full. Um, and so evidently, this this plasma I mean, it may not look like food, but um, it, it's, it's it's simulating the effects of food, and uh, which is all great for me. I mean, maybe we can get rid of this, um, you know, this huge factory farm meat industry, which is um, so so uh, traumatic for the animals. Um, but anyway, I wanted to mention um, as far as them taking firearms away. I mean, we have three D printers, and that technology is just in, um, increasing. As far as the materials and the quality, the quality of the materials. So you know, even if they were to try to take our firearms away, I mean, that, at this point, it really probably wouldn't matter. Um, but I was curious about something. Why did the Hell's Angels protest? What's going on? Uh, well, was it in Canada where they're taking away? The- in Canada, the prime minister said they want to legalize pot, and that's dipping into the cookie jar of the Hell's Angels because they pretty much run mostly all illegal activities all throughout Canada. Um, if people aren't aware of that, the Hells Angels run a lot of the, <laughs> the, the territory there. I've been to uh, Montreal. I've been to Toronto probably about a dozen times over the years. I've been all over Canada. Um, and Hells Angels pretty much run the show. There are police, but we all know that behind the scenes they're running it. So this announcement is basically putting the government putting their hands in the cookie jar, saying, hey, we're going to legalize pot. You're not going to control the illegal trade anymore. Okay. Well, you know, I certainly believe competition is a good thing. Um, you know, whether or not um, how that all works out, I suppose the time will tell. But um, you know, there, there's there's plenty of money in the world. Everybody should be able to to get along just fine. Um, but I, I still think it's a great thing. I'm glad there, that people are finally becoming aware uh, that you know, um, pot is not necessarily bad at least compared to some of the other drugs out there. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, so there's the Cash Foundation. And what I, I was a little bit surprised about was how few reporters there was at this groundbreaking meeting of free energy technology being released to the world. It was kind of – it was actually – actually kind of disappointing but you know what i think i think right now we are on the cusp of something huge and even even as amazing this is right now to discuss this five ten years from now there's going to be so much coming out it's not going to just be ta- us talking about the future it's going to be talking about it being now so um yeah everybody hold on to their hats the ride's about to get real interesting Awesome. Well, thank you, James, for the feedback on that. Now, let's jump into the Super Soldier talk. We got into a little bit of it earlier in the show, which was basically Super Soldiers are soldiers, like you were saying, that are like sort of Green Berets, Special Forces, but they deal in higher dimensions. They deal in other planes of existence. They deal with also ET uh, interference and also contact and other topics and subjects like that on different levels of existence that people pretty much aren't even really, a lot of people aren't maybe ready for to hear because it's just so far out of people's realms of even understanding that this type of stuff could even go on. So uh, if you would, maybe give a little history about some of your personal experiences. I know you didn't go too much in that before, waking up with needle marks, things like that, and then how you started to come back together uh, with your, your, your other super soldier, your soul family, because you've been in contact with dozens of them all over the world. So maybe you could lead into how that started to happen where other super soldiers started to connect with you. Okay, well, so going back in time here, um, I was, like I said, I was working with this individual. Well, I was trying to help him anyway. Um, well, I was basically working on doing a, a little bit of regression work and trying to get to the bottom of what was going on with him. And uh, so ultimately, what happened is he. Um, Claims that uh, they they were deleting the memories from his mind, and that um, they he was in a, some kind of prison cell that was being contained by some kind of energy field, and he was telecommunicating to me by holding a power cord, um, 
and that's how he was actually texting me this information. Otherwise, I wouldn't really have much um, documentation today to, to to show that this actually took place. But uh, he said that they, he he was dying, and that this would be the last time we would um, see you know talk to each other and so on. And um, so he went missing around that was around March of twenty two thousand five, and then. Um, Fast forward about two years later, I was able to relocate this individual. He was posting poems about killing women on an um, internet site, um, and I just I messaged him through the you know the the forum there at that that website. Say, hey, what's going on? How come you 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 claimed they were gonna they were killing you and then you just disappeared for three years? And he didn't write me back, but his girlfriend at that time wrote me back, and uh, she. She says that uh, Nate doesn't know who you are. Uh, um, so at that point, I basically gave them gave her like 200 pages of transcripts um, or whatever I had at the time. It was and okay. So then Nate then then she writes me back says Nate said it was all a joke and he made it all up. But I know it wasn't a joke because I was getting needle marks uh, and um, I was being followed around. Um, there was some there was some telekinetic activity associated with Nathan, uh, which he was also telekinetic as well. Um, and some, there was some other extraterrestrial, I believe it was extraterrestrial activity connected. As, well, that's when I started getting the um, not just needle marks, triangular shaped marks, scoop marks, claw marks, like three, imagine three claws coming down your shoulders on both sides. Um and you know, little little needle marks inside your mouth, triangular shaped, like you know, three three pinpoints in a triangle. Triangle. Um, and this was going on basically on a daily basis. It continues to go on even to this day. Uh, it is my belief it's probably the the grays, maybe perhaps the tall grays working on me. But but let me, let me try not to jump around here. Going back to back in time here. So the girlfriend said they didn't, that he didn't know who I was. Um, so at that point, um, I uh, our, our communications became. Well, she, she was claiming some very bizarre things. She claimed that he started a cult um, of other telekinetic kids like himself. I think he would probably have been about maybe about twenty two at this time, and. Um, he, she said that uh, they all, of course, they all had telekinetic abilities, and that they they were going to start the new world order, and that they were they were called they they called themselves the chosen ones. And uh, okay, so maybe maybe she's just playing uh, some weird joke on me. But but then um, then it even got even weirder. She claimed that um, she was waking up at, at night, and he wasn't in the bed um, or anywhere in the house. Um, she was. In it, and feeling drugged and in a daze, and she claims that she went down in his basement and found bottles of embryos labeled Nathan Wilder, which is what his name was. And um, she couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't even figure out what what that was about. Although I'd been told that those were his clones or some some genetic project, but it doesn't make sense. Why would it be in his basement? Or perhaps maybe it was a cover memory, maybe. Maybe she saw it on a spaceship and she interpreted it as being in the base. I, I don't know. I'm just in, just trying to extrapolate in what it could be. But um, she claims that, um, okay, so the last message I got from her was that uh, she was waking up in a daze and that she had glass shards in her back and she had cut marks on her. And after that, she stopped returning any of my emails and of course Nathan never wrote me at that point and even to this day Nathan has never well he he has come communicate with me basically tell me that there's no um there's no evidence in any government logs logs of aliens ever existing or or mind control ever existing um just some some in my opinion it was it was bs whatever i i don't even know why he would even write that well I can think of why he would write it, but anyway, so then I guess later on down the years, um, I came across another individual 
who um, claims to have. I mean, this this individual looks very. He looked very similar to me, at least when I was his age, and um, he claims some kind of entity took him over, who called themselves Tian, and Tian claimed that he was a reptilian scientist who worked for the military to create super soldiers, and that he took over the data bytes of this individual. His name was Adam to communicate with me. And Tian was telling me some very specific information, which confirmed, because at that point, over the years, I was working, you know, remote, doing remote viewing, communicating different, getting psychic readings and so on, and just trying to figure out well, what's going on here. And even I did get some inf- information from the DOD, um, and that was, I believe, um, Umbra 7, which confirmed that I was in these projects, although it didn't state what Tian was telling me, but... Um, he told me that, uh, essentially, uh, I was part of the Ryan Club organization and that, um, he saved my life. Uh, they left me to die on another planet and he rescued me. And he's telling me that, um, we're going to eventually get our memories, I mean, our, uh, well, you can say memories, our abilities back, uh, but it won't happen till the end. Um, and he called it uh, something going into, I believe, gold form is what he called it. And he said alter, they, the reptilians, they called altars beans of control. Um, and he said uh, he, he said my, my unit number was 54363, which is Gen 5. I'm a Gen 5 super soldier, a unit 4,363. And um, basically, it's a dog tag. But uh, Gen Five is uh, they would have basically the metal type bone. These are all clones. It's not me. Okay, I just want to mention <laughs> they, they they take my DNA and they make clone avatars. Um, and the, these avatars would have these abilities you know and the bones that are made out of metal it's not really technically metal it's called pre it's a it's a it, it's like a metal similar to gold but it comes from the the rings of saturn and it doesn't the body doesn't reject it so like you can put gold in your body and the body won't reject it, it doesn't reject pre but but it's stronger than diamonds is what um the information i was told anyway but uh so what's apparently What's going on is our consciousness are being projected into these clone avatars, and you could call that maybe that would be what the so-called alters are, or these beings of control being projected into these clone bo- b- beings. And you know, avatars is not just something you know that James Cameron whipped up. This the ETs have been using avatars for, I mean, for probably millions of years. When they go to new planets, such as it could be planet Earth, could be new to them, the atmosphere may be toxic to them. You know, they may not be able to breathe the air, or the germs could kill them. Um, even of course, they have technologies for that, but still, they don't. You know, why expose yourself? So, the goal is if they could take some DNA of the local populace, combine it with their own, create an avatar. Because you need to have some of your own DNA in order to project your consciousness into it, so you can create like this hybrid, and then you can a lot of these ETs are able, they can project their consciousness into this hybrid being, and then they can go down to the surface and interact with the populace. Um, so that's certainly one way, and it's a lot safer too because you know the populace are like most people on planet Earth would probably go out and try to kill an alien that showed up in their backyard. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's it's safer for them because they just end up killing the the avatar. But um, so there's a lot of pr- good uh, good uses of the te- technology. Um, as far as who actually has access to this, I'm still trying to figure out because it appears that this is a breakaway civilization. But it, it's almost as if the military has access. Because they're all they're all got like um, what you would call compartmentalization. One organization has their own group of super soldiers. Another has their own group, and the military sort of contacts these these different groups if they got certain 
the, let's say the U.S. military will contact, say, the Galactic Confederation, say, hey, we need to do such and such, and maybe they'll do a joint venture. I, I don't quite know the mechanics on it because I haven't really been given that intel. But I'm just giving us, from what I'm able to put together, it appears that the beans that I worked with was with the Galactic Confederation, but the military may have been able to contact them. I might have, my avatars might have been able to work with the military here on Earth on various missions. I don't know. Um, but there's other organizations too. There was the Nazi Breakaway Civilization, another organization called the Therians, um, and those two. Uh, that might actually be a subshoot of the Nazi groups, but um, they all have many of these organizations each have their own clones of me and they all do it anyway well whether or not they still have these clones I, i've been told they're all they've all been killed or decommissioned or terminated whatever you want to call it which is fine with me i don't need to deal with any more of that craziness but um so anyway um i think there was some oh yeah the other thing i want to mention is the the, the avatar technology um wasn't really they they started using it around um, 1998 uh, and they actually called it at first this year they called it Arbus and then later on it became Cybus that's what the, these these beans are called and when you visual, visualize a super soldier you may think of say I don't know Vin Diesel uh, from Hollywood but it's not necessarily like that some of these super soldiers are a mixture of reptilian and human. Now, these all beans also be used off-world, but it doesn't have to be just human. It could be a, a, a mix of many different species or, or races. Uh, so, some of them are very cyborg-looking. One would be like described as far as like one of my avatars would be, say, uh, six and a half foot tall, um, silvery-like skin, cyborg-like suit, silvery-like cyborg suit, a glass helmet. Um, or actually, it's more like a glass plate over the head. So imagine like a bald head and a glass plate over it. That, that's how I interpret it as anyway. And they would have a heat-seeking, I believe it would be a left eye, is heat-seeking infrared. Um, be like, they, they would carry usually they'd carry a little watch that have a little display case, little display. I actually they think uh, they, they sell watches like this now. But it would show like where the enemy movements are around the battlefield. So you could see, you know, look at your watch and see, oh, they're all, all here and there and there. And, you know, they have special type of weapons and, and all that. But, you know, um, James, we have about a, a minute left. So I oh, just want okay. to let you know to uh, if you can give out some information for people. Obviously, people after hearing an uh, interview like this have many questions. What are some websites and some references you can give people to learn more about super soldiers and your work? Okay. Uh, please visit supersoldiertalk.com. Um, and that's where you can find a lot about the model. My lab information. Also visit neologicaltech.com and learn about the Neo Meditation device. Um, one of the devices, the uh, Gatekey 22, actually has Shungite in it, and that's used for wellness. Um, that could, it, by meditating th- uh, 15 to 30 minutes a day, it'll help you release your traumas. Um, and additionally, please visit healingsoulsurvivors.org uh, and if, to learn about all the latest projects there. Awesome, James. Thank you so much again, Star Brother, for coming on. Planet, and and there are powers that be the masses. Doing the Looking work you're doing, healing soul survivors. Really Check out James' work. Talk like to like you soon, Star Brother. Have a good day. Atlantic mystery, Atlantic's wife of history. Did you the